Well, hey everybody. I'm recording and Hannah's watching TV and it's not coming through the audio. I'm really impressed with myself. I don't remember what brand they are, but if you happen to be really into podcasting and other media production and also like have that weird obsession with uh, always having a screen on, it's the Hotec. Hotec wireless clip belt pack mics. I got two of them together. 60 bucks, 68 bucks or something on Amazon. Worth it? Probably. So, we're going to have a better schedule soon. I don't know. Hannah's doing a video, uh, doing her own painting video, and I am here to do a painting video tonight as well. I say tonight like there's an actual date as to when this is going up. I don't know yet. There we go. Just readjust the mic real quick. Uh, so, tonight, I feel like maybe it's no mystery how much I love orcs. Everybody does. I don't know why. They're just super fun to paint and they're the best to paint when you figure out a damn fine recipe for orc skin so going along with realizing that I need to paint I don't know at least I think I'm up to probably 180 orcs that I need to paint at some point. I got I got my gores done. My gores my gores uh bodies are done so far, which is real nice. Did those with the airbrush. These guys on the other hand, orcs on the other hand, the Mantic as much as I do genuinely love the Mantic uh mega army of orcs. There's not much skin. There's not the kind of skin that I remember from the savage tribal times of other games. Which means that I have more of a fickle, I have more of a, a tiny area to work with. So a paint plan definitely helps. And this paint plan I felt like was definitely one that uh, was worth the experiment because I have a painted troll here way too far away for me to walk off screen to get it but uh, I have three trolls that I need to paint I painted one, followed the plan wrote everything down keep a paint journal it's the last time I'll say it just kidding, I'll probably say it a bunch of times so uh, tonight Orc skin. We're going to start with Reaper's Auburn Shadow, number 241 in their line. And then you have the Marigold Yellow. Would you mind throwing it at me? Yay. You did a thing. Where'd that end up? Uh, I heard it hit something. Well, let me find that. I forgot this mic is clipped to me so I can keep talking while I'm off screen. Uh, that's fine. I'm going to cut this out probably. Um, where the hell did he go? I found it. <coughs> That's some fucking teamwork. If I say so myself. So.
So we're going to start with Auburn Shadow as the base coat over a black prime job. And then we're going to come in with a marigold yellow to highlight before knocking it back down with it's going to sound weird but we're going to knock that marigold yellow down with worn olive again all out of reaper might say that i have the entire corset and then we're going to come in with faded khaki for the very ending so that is going to be the skin tones that we use and tonight's additive is going to be this weird little bottle of clear stuff this weird little bottle of clear stuff is both from golden mediums this is their retarder 50 50 mix with open thinner it's a great mix it's one that i personally enjoy uh i feel like enough people don't really talk about mediums go back and watch the medium episode we explore all that stuff open thinner is better than their airbrush medium just gonna throw that out there so let me get him out of the way this quick product placement now that i've hacked it to my personal preference um this is the new wet palette by army painter it's a direct knockoff of the Everlasting palette from the Danish company, Danish company or UK, I can't remember. It's direct knock, um, worth it. If you don't feel like spending on wet palettes that the paper doesn't last forever as much as the uh, Matthews do, I prefer the Matthews, but this little guy is fun as shit. It's real nice. Uh, double foam in there. It comes with two, comes with two pallet foams. So, I'm gonna start with this tiny little brush, and I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna get into the eyes and white them out right now because that's the first step for him, and that's what it's gonna be. So, got my. I think this is insane detail army painter brush, which means it's a triple double zero. Double zero because I think the psycho is the triple zero. Okay. There we have our little ghast fella. Ooh, he looks like a ghost now. Ghost now. Now he looks to be terrifying. Okay. So. As I say, yeah, this army painter guy is great. I just glued, I ran some super glue onto him and uh, put some sheet metal that I had because I magnetized all of my bases for the Kings of War army, my orc army, Kings of War. It's just simple for me, easy as can be. So, you know, all right. Citadel large base brush, okay. All right, so first coat, gonna be Auburn Shadow. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay some of this out on my wet palette and work with him at full strength. So I'm not even messing around with additives quite yet. This is just a nice solid base coat brush is stiff as shit because I like the armor painter brushes better. Personal preference. Okay, so come in here. I love this Auburn. I love this uh, Auburn Shadow just, or this, yeah, Auburn Shadow just because it's got this red to it. Now again, lest we never forget, I'm colorblind as shit, so this brown could be, I could tell you all kinds of wrong things about this brown. I guess stop taking this mini out of frame. That'd be smart of me, right? Okay, so. Uh, but this brown, it's very, it's got a very red feet look to it in my eye. So, coming in here. These trolls are great. They've got uh, lots of detail. Base is done by me. Because I know they look a lot like the, uh, 
Mantic Dungeon, uh, Dungeon Siege or Dungeon something game that they do. And all those minis, of course, have uh, decorative bases that are attached to the minis that they come with. Uh, can't remember the name of the game. Dungeon something. Uh, anyway, but, uh, but yeah, so these trolls, they have a lot of high detail, and the Mega Army came with three of them. They're great. They're brutes. They're brutes. They're mean. You get them into a horde, they're high attack rolls, high, high defense, defense of five, and they're, they're definitely worth, they're definitely a moving brick wall. So, anyway, on a black prime job, stop pulling it off frame job. One day I will. Okay, so we're going to come in here. And as you guys know, I always work with a large brush. I always wear the brush that's bigger than the piece because it makes me focus. It makes me sit and have to think about what I'm doing. But with these metal bits that are on it, it's it. They're, the trolls are... Not they're armored, but they're armored in like scattershot stuff. They're they're not uniform. They have lots of excess skin, and being uh, brutes that troll or that orcs are willing to have uh, on the battlefield with them, you know they're going to be of orcish descent. They're definitely going to have some green skin blood in them. Beautiful little fucking monsters, just. Yeah, murderous pets. Oh yeah, tiny little head, tiny little head like, like uh, like that awful Mario movie. It's like it's like painting a Koopa. <laughs> That's some old shit. I'm an old man. Not a Gary Oldman either. Just a just an old man. But uh, yeah, we're gonna come through and we're gonna go back over the metal as well. So I'm not being too particular here in this first layer. Just getting it on there, letting it thicken up, letting it cover over. Oh yeah. Love that. Love that auburn shadow color. God damn. My hands shake. Cause I'm all Yeah. The only place I'm gonna take any care I brought I I blocked in those eyes first because it's easiest to go, it's easiest to get around them and maintain the paint scheme if I, if I have the eyes blocked in white and I'm not trying to skate, I'm not trying to overshoot the landing with the, uh, tiny, you know, getting a tiny brush in that eye and then fucking everything up and having to go back and do eight more steps to get that eye right to match up with the rest of the body again. So that's why we got him blocked in already just enjoy it that way <laughs> so there we go yeah can I get in there I'm gonna swap out to the army painter this guy's a little too stiff for me yeah a little too stiff a little too big for where I'm working in here I already have these guys mounted together because they have already seen battle. And uh, it's uh, a little difficult to get in in this neck. Make sure I'm getting enough. These are not, again, uh, I'm going somewhere. For me personally, I'm shooting for well painted, which for the entirety of the army is something that to me means a bit better, a bit higher than tabletop standard, but not hero quality for every infantry unit. Because I just, <sighs> I don't think I have the patience to paint that kind of extreme detail where I'm working two and a half hours on every mini over 150 uh, 160 minis you know this just from the uh, just from the mega army I have right around 140 minis 
plus the gores, which the gores were super fun and super easy to get together, but yeah, let me switch back to this guy here. I should get a cutting mat or something for this, for the for across the tabletop, since I scenic it. So we got that in there. And come back in here. God. Missed the spot here under his neck. No, I didn't. Oh yeah, I did. Okay. All right. So yeah, gonna get right up in there. Yeah, I'd switch back to the army painter. Uh. Large dry brush, just because of the surface area, and I prefer the softness of Army Painter. I like the way that Army Painter bristles respond. They're synthetics. Uh, they're synthetics the same way that GW synthetics are, are, and the GW brushes are just a little stiff for my taste. So, okay, Can dab out a little more Auburn shadow gonna come back in here because I missed a little bit under the neck getting the brush edge caught on the armor plate instead of actually getting onto the body I'm gonna fill in this little hole here yeah that's where his arms meet up there's a dual this is a double arm there's a double arm attachment for anybody that's ever worked with minis like this where you got you got a add both arms at the same time, they're holding a the club, they're holding a the pike, they're holding anything that's, uh, that the both shoulders have to be attached at the same time. Mmm. Little difficult to get it to match up exactly to the sculpt and without having to come back in with, like, Vallejo plastic filler or something of that nature. Okay, and on the fingernails... Alright, alright, uh, so, okay, now I'm a lot more satisfied with them. If you hear a weird, if you hear a real weird noise when I wipe my brushes out, all of my extra mixing balls are in my brush water cup because they agitate the bristles more. I don't get as much buildup in the ferrule, makes the brushes last longer. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to hurt them. They don't care. Brushes are great. They're going to last a lot longer if you do it that way. So, let's sit him here for a second. We're going to talk about something. Okay. Zenithyl highlighting is lovely, but it forces you to work in different spectrums. These colors, all four of these colors that I've picked for this mini, are within the same, this part of the circle. If I would have Zenithyl highlighted, I have to work with a shitload of colors, and that's real annoying when you're painting an army. So to cut down on that, this next highlight layer is going to be different. It's going to be different than what you expect. Because what we're going to do is, I'm going to take this marigold yellow, and throw this guy in my mouth, just for right now. Now that the base layer has tacked up, you would think that we would not go to the lightest of colors next, but you're wrong. You're wrong, I'm wrong, everyone's wrong. It's art. Frustrating, isn't it? So, with the mini that I had painted earlier, this worked well for me. And as you see, I'm not adding anything to this. I'm just, this is just straight marigold yellow right onto the wet palette. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take all of these volumes, these shapes of muscle, all this kind of stuff. I'm going to wipe some of that off of there. I'll wipe some off of him. And I'm gonna I'm gonna take the high points of all of these volumes, all these big bulky muscle sections, and I'm not dry brushing, but I am selectively highlighting him because our next two our next two layers of paint are going to be exceptionally translucent. 
they're going to be a lot more translucent than even an air even an airbrush paint would be at this point. I I like to work with retarder and clear gels. Uh, yeah, like that that open thinner is dead clear, and I like to push paint to a point where pigments settle instead of get applied. So we're going to come in here, we're going to dry brush over all this beautiful auburn shadow. Mm, maybe not particularly dry brush. I say dry brush, but eh, something close to it. Going to make sure that we're not covering over everything. Okay, we're just working these high volumes. This This deep center between his right in here between his shoulder blades I want to make sure that's nice and shadowed heavy nice and dark in there with that auburn and I keep dropping this damn mini oh my god you'd think by now I'd stop doing it nope Okay. so I managed to get white on his shoulder pad I'm dumb it happens And we're coming through with the monster brush. I keep forgetting that I have Speedball Pink Soap in my brush water. And uh, it's real gross. I'm a brush licker, and Speedball does not taste as good as just paint. It's a weird thing to say, but brush lickers out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know? I use Reaper and Vallejo, and the reason why is because Army Painter brushes are great, but their paint tastes like shit. <laughs> <coughs> Which is a, yeah, it's a goofy statement. I'm being silly, but. So we're not, now I'm not following, now with Xenophil, Xenophil is selectively coming from the Zenith. So where the sun would be at its highest point, the 12 o'clock position, the, uh, I don't even know what that would be in an XYZ, but <laughs> this is not something that works in with a central light source. There's no, there's no supposed light source when I come back through and cover him over with this beautiful, beautiful marigold yellow. There, I'm not considering where the sun would be. I'm not giving that any thought at all. What I'm doing is I'm just grabbing the high points of the volumes, making sure that they're going to stand out and they're going to have a different saturation that, I, that, that will work with the next layers. They're colors that work together. So that even though it looks like the you know the commonality, you're working bottom to top. You're working from your darkest to your lightest. That's the usual method. I, on the other hand, in this point, am taking my lightest, and we're going to bury it. But the reason why is because of translucency on the next layers, and it's going to make it real, real dope. You'll see. Okay. Come in here across the side of the face. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And in here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to start. Start bringing that face up. Mm-hmm. Start clearing those cheeks. Cleaning those cheeks up just a little bit. Mm-hmm. We might end up skipping to the... might time-lapse this. It all depends on whether or not I can find something to talk about for the next 15 minutes. Don't really know. I'm kind of in a odd space. Took an extra day off. Blah, 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 blah. Took some time to myself. It's been great. I might have took my medication a little too late. So I have the energy and excitement to do this. I'm just not sure that I have anything on my mind to talk about while I do it. Ah, who knows. So... Either case, yeah, see that? Like, 
that that marigold yellow over this auburn shadow it just it calms it it it, it doesn't give it it gives it good coverage good solid coverage without coming through 14 15 times and since it's getting covered up not covered up but since it's getting since it's being used as an accent and an underlayer it gives it enough coverage that I'm not coming through like 15 times and bitching about how blur the coverage blah, 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 blah. nope don't care nope but okay so double check on our here yep that's where I forgot no. My standard of life here with minis and this army is high, but also it's also one of, you know what? If I miss something at any point and I'm 15, 20 guys in, I'll just put them in the center of the movement tray. Nobody will ever see them. And that's fine with me. So, try to make an effort to get through the right way the first time. And then, all right, so this will be the second one of these guys that are done. And uh, you'll see here at the end that they, when, when together, they really end up coming together beautifully. And they, they really, when you're, when you're working with a unit of things, the flaws are going to be easily overlooked which is fantastic. The minor imperfections will just pass right through. And let's see. Mm, excuse me. Looking for a long-haired flat brush. And, you know, I think he's going to be my guy. So we got a small dry brush from Army Painter. Okay. We're going to take... Which one was it? Yeah, Worn Olive. Okay. We're going to put... an amount of Worn Olive on here. Move this over so he's centered. Okay, so we got Worn Olive. And then, my additive, my medium mix is going to be... So, 50% Retarder and 50% open thinner and I'm going to take about two and a half drops out of this bottle okay and we got the small dry brush enjoy the bounce that comes with his head uh, I like the bristles they uh like the bristles with these guys they they soak up a little bit more, they work a little better, uh, they, they respond a little better, and it's easier to get into places on these larger minis without having to fight around. So, okay. Slide him out of the way for a second. Okay. So that open thinner and retarder mix makes this. It makes paint that is that kind of translucent where if I my now my brush is soaked with this stuff and you see here on this on the metal that I added to this that you can see right through it that's the entire point so we're going to load up Okay. Come in through here. And I know what you're saying. Holy shit, that's crazy coverage. Let it dry. You'll see. It's covering so much, and oh, you're ruining all that effort that you just put into it. Nope. Give it a second. This one we're going to try and not jam a bunch of paint into his stitches. I say, as I jam a bunch of paint into his stitches. Oh my god, I'm the best. So, 
Let me come on through here. Still got plenty of paint on the brush, moving around, just moving around. Yep, now we're getting into that crack. Now we're getting deep into that, that space the, along the spine there. Yeah. Let it right back up. Come back here across the shoulder. Let it seep into that uh, dead socket there. Get across there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come down here across the leg. Just because we're in the area, we might as well stop by. Like that annoying shit your parents did in the 90s. Yeah. Awful. Awful, isn't it? Like... Hey man, I had other plans. I was gonna go home and play Sega. Could we not do this shit? Nope. We're in the neighborhood, we'll stop by. So we got the leg done, now we're moving on to the arm. Yeah. So by the time I get this guy, so by the time I get around this guy, should be reasonably dry. When this, when this medium mix dries up, it, it just, Oh, it's so thin. Oh, so beautifully thin. Oh my god, so thin. So gorgeous. So it's going to be enough that it looks almost like a it's going to look more like a stain than a layer of paint. It's kind of what we're working with, looking for here. And if you're having trouble with the idea of glazing this is what I see as glazing, where we're putting on paint that complements and adds to the values that are set, that you've sketched in, that I have sketched in. Glaze, glazing over it creates a new layer that the underwork has... Uh, provided the light change, all the fun stuff, so that we're actually looking at a living thing. We're, lo we're looking at something that, that feels bright and vibrant al and alive, like a, like a weird 30-second snippet from an, Abbott's, from an ABBA song. Goddamn ABBA. Everybody loves ABBA. Even I love ABBA. I won't fight it anymore. It's not worth it. <laughs> so, I'm coming in here through the armpit. Mm. I think there's an entire boob that I missed on him. Yeah, probably. That's okay. It's behind that. It's behind that big old rock club. I didn't notice it. Probably won't be noticed in play. It'd be noticed if I go, if I happen to go to, you know, the Depticon or something like that and put in for Best Painted Army. It's a paint competition. Yeah, of course they're going to pick, pick apart all the things that I screwed up. But, like, I don't know that I would. It'd be worth it, though. But I'm not painting for competition. I'm painting for me. So, right in here, this is where we, it's around where we started. So you see here that it's got it's gotten a nice green back to green back to green beautiful beautiful green skin can't love a woman if she ain't got green skin ask the orcs ask the orcs so it's tinted green all over now so we have high spots in here where the marigold yellow is definitely powering through but not showing itself in entirety which is what we want the shades are changing everything's changing and the light source itself is not the the light the ambient light in the room not changing at all but here we are oh it's not gonna focus damn thing anyway but yeah, in, in here, I have not changed this light source. I've not stopped recording for the past 35 minutes, which is real weird for me. Um, it's like an awkward first date, I guess. But, yeah. And the fun part about working, working this thin is that when it gets into this state, 
you can see here it's still it still looks super thick and it looks like it's going to dry solid and it's not but you can come in here and you can just still push it around in case you happen to miss the fact that that's a split between the armor <laughs> that's okay we're going to cover that up the armor later we'll cover that up and we'll paint the armor here later so I'm gonna look around again. Yeah, I'm gonna give him a good look around. I'm gonna give him a good look around. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll come in here, back behind this arm. Just layer that up. It's gonna look a little weird. Everything's going to look a little awkward until we get to that last layer, but we're coming on that next, so. All right, I'm going to give him a little bit. All right, so let's finish up this green skin fella now that I'm actually back after two days of not working on him. All right, so we're finishing up this troll. The last layer was worn olive mixed with the, uh, was mixed with, the 50-50 retarder and thinner, uh, yeah, open thinner from, from uh, golden mediums. Golden mediums. Okay. All right. So I'm really happy with that result. Nice and just flowing. Got some dark in there. Got some light in there. Just real happy. So what we're going to do, the very last, uh, yeah, so Worn Olive was our last layer. And our very, very final layer is going to be Faded Khaki for his skin. So this one's a little fickle. All right, so going to come in with a little bit of thinner, just a, just a little, little bit of thinner, just to give it some translucency this uh, retarder mix. Okay. All right. Go dry brush for our next and final highlight, which is going to be dry brushing. Fascinating. <coughs> yeah, you don't want to use, if you're trying to dry brush something, you don't want to use a brush that is soaking wet. It's your, you know, like this guy, with this troll here, I've been using the same brush, uh, same head, everything all throughout this layer. So you do literally want to pick up a physically dry brush, get as much of it off as you can. Okay. See, we're coming in. See, so yeah, it's barely visible, nice and thinned out. Okay. Uh, run it against my thumb here just so I can feel it when it starts to get dropped out a good bit okay it doesn't have to be the thinnest of dry brushes but it doesn't have to be the lightest of dry brushes but just enough you're gonna see some surface moisture surface moisture in there yeah gonna come in okay. maybe not a dry brush then just gonna come in and just get some on there, get some on the high spots, and let it really shine out. And this is gonna dry nice. Uh, this takes a little while to dry, but as soon as it does, uh, you're gonna be real happy with the result, probably. But for me, this is definitely my fi out of the many ages of trying to find a good trying to find a good skin tonality especially for army games for orcs to work with and to repeat consistently so that they don't look like they're coming out of 9,000 different uh, families of orcs I want them to look reasonably similar uh, so far I have enjoyed the F word out of this guy, out of this uh, setup because it just sits nice Take some of those faded khaki and add a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit more so that I'm not as thinned out because, yeah, good lord, that's a little thin. Okay. 
Yeah, John, that's a little thin. Um, okay, so. But yeah, for the sake of this paint scheme, I'm, I'm real happy with it and how it's coming out, how it's giving a lot of vibrancy to the rolling muscle on the back of this troll. I think it's going to do great for the sake of uh, having to paint damn near 200 orcs soon and yeah yeah gonna get in there yeah nice and neat oh yeah oh yeah oh. there we go there we go that's the result i'm looking for i will happily admit that uh, i tried to wing it and say that i was doing right i was not i was just trying to avoid looking like an asshole and guess what guys i'm not a professional i'm always gonna look like an asshole Kind of comes with the territory. So, yeah, but you see here, out, out here in the back, he's looking real fine. He's looking mighty fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And since this is just, I mean, this was basically a, uh, this was a way to experiment and find a paint color, uh, paint palette for orc skin that I was going to be happy with. I'm I'm seriously beyond elated with this result, and uh, yeah, feeling real good about it. So, gonna wait for this guy to dry, but uh, for the sake of not spending the rest of the night working on him, because I don't really feel like it, uh, we're gonna we're gonna snap our fingers. To finish the result, boop. I'm gonna try to magic that out in editing, but uh, probably won't work out. But here's the here's the finished result from the first roll that I did. I did a uh, rusty like scavenger armor on him. Um, but here you can see it's just yeah, real light, real light in the lights, real dark in the spine, looking real gross. I feel like it's a damn fine amount of contrast without inking it and. Yeah, I'm super happy with the result. This was after two, uh, this was after two brushings of the faded khaki mix on top of them, and uh, yeah, I'm definitely excited to see that all over a table, murdering the living shit out of the Trident realm. So, real enthused about that one. But all right, guys. Well, that's uh, this week's video for now. Since I don't want to make just another. Uh, how to how to uh, Kings of War game the war video uh, that was a painting video it's been a little while so there you be leave a comment below let me know if you have some secret product though if you have some secret method of uh, orc skin you might you might have a secret method of orc skin that I don't know about and I might like it better because after orcs I mean I got lots of plans for the sake of armies to add to the collection it's gonna be a doozy all right well we'll see you guys next time comment like share blah 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 do all the cool shit so that youtube likes us better all right bye